Hey babe, yeah, I got everything. Anything else you need? Uh, just going to the car, should be home in about 20 minutes. Oh my God, she's hot. Wow. No, babe, babe, no, it, it, it's not a girl. It, it's a car, yeah, it's a car. What kind of car? I don't know, it looks like a, yeah, it's a Maserati something. Oh my God. Hold on, yeah, I'll, I'll take a picture. It's a car. You want me to take a picture? Okay, I'll take a picture of it so that you can see it's a car, my God. Hold on, wait, yep, yeah, hold on. I'm just sending it to you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a car. She's gorgeous. Okay, I'll see you soon. A few moments later. What we have in here is the new Maserati MC20, which stands for Maserati Corsa 2020. The model that you've seen here was kindly provided by our good friends at Maserati of Toronto and Alfa Romeo of Toronto. They're a dealership located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. They're kind enough to allow me to borrow this for the day and test drive it and talk about why this thing is probably one of the coolest cars made from Maserati in a while. If you want to know more about them, the link will be in the description below if you want to check out this thing in person. Not sure about the test drive, but you do have the chance to see this in person at their store. The Maserati MC20 was developed by the Maserati Innovation Lab. It is essentially a fully Italian built model. It was actually developed in Modena. 97% of the development for the MC20 was designed virtually, known as the Virtual Vehicle Dynamics Development. A bunch of words, basically this thing, it was developed through a computer. The MC20 is particularly light. It has an impressive power to weight ratio of 2.3 kgs or five pounds per horsepower. It only weighs 1500 kg, which is about 3300 pounds. They were able to achieve such lightweight car because they use carbon fiber for the entire chassis. Maserati says that the reason they did that was because it is a lot easier creating shapes than using standard metal, especially the butterfly doors. Over 2,000 man hours were spent at the Delara wind tunnel and over a thousand hours for virtually designing this thing to make it as efficient and make it as lightweight, as refined and sporty and elegant at the same time. And because of that, they were able to achieve this masterpiece that you see over here. And because of all the work spent in designing this thing, this car can achieve a top speed of 326 kilometers an hour, 202 miles per hour, and it will continue to hug the ground in all conditions. And because of all that work, they were able to add a lot, I mean a lot of air vents. Let me show you around. You have two in here, one on the right side and one on the left. We have more underneath where the bumper is located, the front area, more continues onto the right side, in front of the rear tire, and another one in front of the front tire, and another one behind the front tire. And you have more around here. This is of course for the engine to cool down that V6 twin turbo. You can see the small lines even on the side. Of course, they wouldn't let this area not breathe. And you can see the design of the Trident and more vents around the actual engine cover. Of course, they couldn't forget the diffuser and the rear bumper. It continues all the way through. To get into the car, well, you have a button located underneath here. Not just that, there's a second button to lock the vehicle. But in this case, you press the main one and it opens into the butterfly style. Of course, shows off this beautiful carbon fiber built door, which I absolutely love. And you have the suede or Alcantara in this case. And the door handle, of course, for lightweight, it is made of leather and you can feel that. The next thing is that when you open the door underneath here in carbon fiber, there is the door step 
frame that says MC20. So when you're getting inside, you know you're driving a Maserati MC20. <laughs> Okay, let's sit inside and let's talk about this. First of all, I'm 6'2", pretty comfortable, I have to say. Part of the package with this car is the fact that it comes with interior carbon fiber trim. So you have the top of the cluster, the steering wheel, beautiful shape with a flat bottom, the center area here, more carbon fiber. And of course, added to the same build is the Alcantara, which you see it under here. And of course, the seats, the ceiling, everything else that you'd see made of uh, Alcantara. The next thing I love about this is the little details. Like for example, the footstep for the passenger side has the Maserati logo, but it has an aluminum finish, a lightweight material. The same thing for the driver's side, for the gas pedal and the brake, and for the rest area. Absolutely love those little things. The next thing in front of the passenger to make sure that they know this is an MC20. They're going to have the beautiful Italian flag underneath and the MC20 logo. Then we move on to the center. We have this screen, a 10.25 inch screen, digital display, of course, HD. And it's something that you'd see in like the Maserati uh, Grecale, for example, the new Gran Turismo is the new infotainment that you see in most of the Alfa Romeos as well and Maseratis. Into the center area, let's talk about this. Besides this beautiful carbon fiber finish, you have these three uh, knobs, well, one knob and two buttons. The middle one is for drive and manuals, if you go into manual transmission. The next one is reverse. One thing you notice with this car is that it doesn't have a parking mode. What it does have, though, is the start and stop button, which works for the parking mode. So when you turn off the car, the vehicle goes into park mode. When you turn it on, it stays in park mode unless you press that button. The top button over here does a few things. Let me show you. This part here is a screen, so let's start it up and you see the Maserati logo just come to life. Beautiful. Next thing, of course, you have the driving mode. So GT is the GT mode, is the default mode. This does the engine boost is normal, pedal sensitivity is normal resistance, and the exhaust valves are active above 5,000 RPM. The gear shift is slow and smooth. The suspension is in soft mode and the traction control is in normal for the GT. The next one is wet. Now, this is quite interesting. In wet, the engine boost is limited. You have normal resistance for the pedal and it only opens the exhaust valves over 5,000 RPM. The gear shift, the suspension and traction control are always in the same mode as the GT. The traction control is active when it's needed, of course, if it's too wet outside. And of course, we go into the next mode, which is sport. Now, in sport mode, this is quite interesting. It offers the highest performance in high traction conditions. The engine boost is in normal mode, the pedal sensitivity is low resistant and high sensitivity, and the exhaust valve opens at 3500 RPM. The gears are faster in this mode, the suspension is stiffer, and the traction control goes into sport mode. In Corsa mode, it offers the most extreme driving experience. First, you have the engine boost at maximum level. The pedal sensitivity, of course, is low resistance and extremely sensitive when it's needed. The exhaust valves are always open with the Corsa mode. The gear shift is in full racing mode. The suspension system is in full racing mode and the traction control goes into race mode in case you want to take it around the track that's the whole idea so Corsa means race or track in this case and the driver can activate the launch control with the button located onto the steering wheel because this car doesn't offer the best visibility it's a sports car it's a supercar style right so what they've done which i absolutely love is the rear view mirror you can turn this off and turn it on and it displays the rear side so you have the best visibility of course this comes with power doors what i mean with that you have a button located onto the side here for both passenger and driver you press that and you push the door it's actually the easiest thing to do i thought it would be heavier but it's made of carbon fiber which means it's pretty light first of all carved out beautiful steering wheel love the carbon fiber the alcantara let's talk about what you get in here first it's the start button which is something that you see in other maserati cars and even alfa romeos they have the same button on the right side it's the launch control although i would have preferred to have the driving modes here i do appreciate it's in the middle with a little screen there i can see all the details on the right side you have your cruise control 
and this little button that you see here that's to raise the front of the vehicle or lower it on the right side of the steering wheel you have the volume and of course for to answer phone calls and the voice control and a beautiful trident of the maserati brand Okay, let's talk about uh, the engine specs. First of all, this uses a new power unit. It's a V6, 90 degree twin turbocharged engine. Of course, it makes 630 brake horsepower. Maserati says that this will do zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds, which is quite impressive. This car basically has a specific power output of 210 horsepower per liter. One of the important things about this engine it is that, that it basically takes some of the technology from Formula One cars and we know that Alfa Romeo races in F1. The car is equipped with an automatic uh, transmission in eight speeds and it has an oil immersed dual clutch design with six power and two overdrive speeds to ensure that it meets the emission standards. The suspension system in the front features a double wishbone with a semi virtual steering and it does have two bottom links and one top link. And the same semi virtual layout is adopted to the rear suspension system, which is one of the few cases that it's been used. It also equipped uh, with the active shock absorbers, so it changes the suspension system based on the driving mode, as I mentioned previously, different driving modes. In this case, we're driving in GT, which is Grand Touring, a bit more comfortable for day-to-day -day use, although not many people, I believe, would daily drive this thing. Now, one of the important things about the suspension system is the fact that they're all forged aluminum, to maximize the weight savings. Hence why this thing weighs only 3,300 pounds or 1,500 kg. What is it like to drive this thing? Well, first of all, even in Corsa mode, the suspension system, it's not that stiff. In GT mode, it's comfortable. You do hear a bit of the road noise. Of course, there is a supercar in many ways, a sports car, supercar, whatever you want to call it. This one, specifically falls more into the supercar style because it is a mid-engine and you got that lower design in the front. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Ford GT of 2007. And one thing I love about it is it doesn't have like a proper wing in the back. It looks smooth all the way and they have achieved downforce just with the current design without adding any carbon fiber spoilers or anything to extend or give it more downforce. Just the way the car is designed gives it the best drag numbers. Visibility, it's not bad for a car that sits pretty low with very small windows all around, although this thing here at the top does come in handy. The mirrors are extended out to give you the optimum visibility for left and right sides you feel like you're driving in a very low to the ground car, that is for sure. The shifts are super quick in this car. You put this thing into sport mode, press the button in manual transmission, downshift, downshift, downshift again. Oh, mama! <laughs> Woo! Love this. The downshifts are so quick in this car. I love this beauty. And everywhere I've been driving this thing, people just stare at it. Okay, let's uh, downshift one more time. <laughs> now, here's one thing that I could complain about this car a little bit. And that is the exhaust sound. Although, it is a bit civilized. It does have ex basically active exhaust valves that open up in different modes, different RPM. It doesn't sound as aggressive as it looks. I wish the sound was a bit more, well, let's say Ferrari-like, a bit more screaming, a bit more crazy, a bit more exciting, a little bit. That, that's one thing I can complain about this thing. But it is a V6 twin turbo. It's not that it's a bad sound, it's just, it's not vicious. This car looks elegant, 
but vicious at the same time. And it doesn't have that, and that's one thing that disappoints me a little. But I'd say this car could do with a better exhaust. If you bought one, or if I bought one after I send, I sell one of my kidneys, um, this could basically need a replacement for that exhaust system because I just like it to be a bit more vicious. I want to hear that thing scream and not get a ticket, of course. But just that is one thing that this is missing slightly. Nothing else I could complain about this car. Like, I've been driving it all day because it's one of the cars that you don't get it for a full week. We're, kind, we're lucky enough to actually get it from the dealership uh, because, of course, Maserati of Canada will never put one on the press. That would have been pretty cool. But here's uh, what I think about this versus the Corvette Z06, which I haven't driven. And uh, that's one car that this has been compared to. Of course, Porsche cars as well. But that, I think, is one of the cars that this is going up against. The Z06 is definitely up there in terms of speed. And it's probably faster than this uh, on a straight line. But the power to weight ratio, this is far better. It is lighter. It's built of carbon fiber, the entire chassis. The door panels are, well, the entire door basically is, is made of carbon fiber. That's a crazy technology. And it's very rare to see nowadays in many sports cars or high performance cars. The Z06, on the other hand, it's that American crazy V8 that just screams constantly. I did see one in person, in, a, in and out. You got with those carbon fiber wheels. This, on the other hand, has those 20-inch wheels that are called birdcage because they look like a birdcage, apparently, to Maserati. It's got the beautiful blue calipers. The paint on the outside is, it's called Brave White color in Italian, well, translated from Italian. Cost about $17,000 Canadian to pick that option. And having said that, I do notice why it's worth that because in different areas, different position, different sunlight, it changes the color and I love that. It looks like a pearl white in some places, a bit of a pinkish color overlay. It's absolutely magnificent looking at it under the sun. I love it. But going back to the Z06, it's a tough one because the Z06 is unique in its own way. It's quick. It looks incredible. It is a mid-engine as well. But at the same time, I think the Maserati has more presence. It looks more elegant. It looks more sophisticated. It feels better on the inside, I think. I've driven the C8. I'd assume the Z06 is the next stage for the C8. The build quality, I think, in this car is slightly better than the one in the uh, Corvette. The Corvette, when you pop the hood, kind of looks like a kit car a little bit. This, on the other hand, is a bit more refined. I love that carbon fiber finish, which you get, of course, in the Z06. But having said that, the Z06, it's gonna be something that it will be available, well, let's just say, for a while, and they will offer the same thing over and over again. I don't know if Maserati is gonna offer this in the next 10, 15 years, but they will continue to make it this, because they are they have this habit that they wait for another, for 20 years and then bring something crazy like this. I love this. I love how it drives. I love how it handles. I absolutely love how it looks. But over the Z06 will be a tough one because this goes up to $331,000 Canadian. The Z06 is cheaper than that, but that doesn't mean that it's a better car. I'd still pick this. I love this. I love how it looks. I love how it drives. The looks is just everything for me. Like I break my neck just staring at this going left and right. Um, it's a superb machine that they, they've done amazing things to this. The price is where it's a bit steep, I have to say, but it's also a Maserati. 